Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all here in this session at TNV Academy. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our eminent speaker, Mr. Srinivasan Sitaraman today, who is going to talk to us about documents and records as per ISO 9001-2015. In this webinar today, Mr. Sri, Mr. Srinivasan Sitaraman will discuss this topic in detail along with some real life examples he has experienced in the industry. Our distinguished speaker, Mr. Sita Raman, has done his post-graduation in chemistry from Anna Malai University, India. He is also a lead auditor in ISO 9001, 14001 and 45001 standards. He has an industrial experience of around 30 years in various industries ranging from manufacturing of primary and secondary batteries, non-ferrous alloys, lamp components and organizations based in India, South Africa and Sultanate of Oman. He has been imparting training to a number of organizations, entrepreneurs and individuals on various topics related to ISO terminologies, their certification and implementation. It was just a brief introduction of our guest speaker today. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Sri, uh, Srinivasan Sitaram. I may request Mr. Sitaraman now to please start the session on documents and records as per ISO 9001-2015. A uh, very good afternoon to all of you and thank you very much uh, to TNV Academy for giving me an opportunity to host this uh, webinar and uh, this is another webinar from me on uh, documented information as per ISO 9001-2015. It's very important to understand this because uh, this is going to help the organization implement the uh, elements of the quality management system as well as maintain it and uh, effectively improve the uh, system going forward. So that's why documented information is very important for us to understand okay this webinar will last about 40 minutes or so at the end of it we will have a question and answer session where all your doubts can be clarified hope it's okay with you so i will start with the uh, webinar now okay so in this webinar the topics will be covered will be why document information first of all we need to understand why at all we need to have documents and records for the organization to implement this uh, quality management system effectively that's very important to understand. If the answer is clear, we will also be able to understand and implement it effectively. Second is, what are all the requirements of documented information as per ISO 9000-2015? So generally, documents and record, everybody understands to a certain extent. But what are all the requirements you need to fulfill in order to get certification and also continue to get the certification by maintaining and re um, uh, reusing these documents? So that is very important to understand. At the end of it, we'll have the question and answer session. Any doubts, anything, if you put your queries through the chat box, I will be able to pick it up and then we will discuss the answers at the end of the session. Okay. So now need for documented information. Why, why documented information? It is very important for us to understand. First, what is document information that is important? See, the definition here as per ISO 9000-2015 is information required to be controlled and maintained by an organization and the medium on which it is contained. This is very important to understand. What are all the key words here? Information I have highlighted, controlled is highlighted, maintained as well as the medium. Information is always useful data. It can be a, a you know number or it can be instruction or it can be any kind of data or uh, information which is required for the organization to be controlled means you cannot allow the information to be available to everybody. It has to be controlled access to be given to employees and also latest versions and all these things should be very effectively controlled. That's why information has to be controlled and maintained by organization. Maintain means uh, uh, from uh, retrievability, from accessibility, and also it should not deteriorate by with the elements. So that's why whenever any new changes happens, the old uh, uh, revisions have to be taken out by the organization and new versions have to be implemented. And that is what we call maintaining. So on a continuous basis, it has to be maintained. It's not like at the time of certification, we have made a fantastic documentation. After that, nobody is looking at it. So that means it is not effectively implemented. So always it has to be maintained. If uh, organization is not reviewing or revising the document at least once in two years that means that document is not being followed so that is why maintaining it is also very important by an organization and the medium on which it is contained medium means it can be a, a electronic medium soft hard digital format nowadays the trend is moving towards soft format because it is environmental friendly no need to waste paper and also it's easy to 
control and make revisions very simply by a press of a button we can make the new revisions available to everyone so that is the electronic way digital format is one part of electronic way we are doing it and soft everybody understands it's basically a soft copy which can be you know emailed transmitted very easily hard copy it's a old traditional way of you know keeping in the paper which for some areas where the uh, it access is not available where uh, the shop floor or maybe some uh, heavy equipment where you cannot put the computers you may have to keep a hard copy of it so still it is in uh, practice but it is very very limited extent slowly organizations are moving towards electronic uh, digital media also it it should pertain to the management system and processes so whatever information we are talking about it is not all the information we are talking only pertaining to the quality management system because there are various other uh, documents handled in the organization like finance documents and other uh, critical information which will be there but may not be pertaining to quality management system. so we are focusing only today in this webinar on the quality management system and the processes which has been established for the implementation of the management system information created by organization or from any other sources for example some documentation or information can come from external sources also for example iso standard itself is not an internal document it's an external document to the organization coming from international organization for standardization like that engineering department may be following a lot of ASTM standards and other uh, standards, even ISA standards, uh, so many BAS standards will be there. These are all external to the organization that also need to be controlled and maintained in the organization. So that is what we are mean meaning here. Information needed for the operation of the processes. This is what is the nuts and bolts of, you know, how to operate the processes, like uh, very uh, clear instructions for everyone to follow so that no mistake happens and also consistency is maintained. So that is what we call information needed for the operation of the processes. And finally, evidence of results achieved. That means if you have followed some instruction, you would have created some records. That's what we call evidence of results achieved. So more important of all is the evidence of results achieved. That is also considered as a documented information. We'll see the difference between them, but right now we'll take it as a documented information. Now you see that documents need to be maintained as documented information. Here, basically, we are talking about procedures, instructions, standard operating procedures, and things like that. So that is to be maintained as documented information, whereas the results achieved or the records noted need to be retained as a documented information. So both are together called documented information, but the instructions and the procedures are called maintained document information, whereas the results achieved are retained document information. That's what we call record. So both are important. Together, they are called documented information. OK, so now why we need, first of all, we understood what is documented information. There are two categories, documents and records. Now we are asking this question, why we need to have document information? Remember, the goal here is consistency for your process. When an organization is operating, there are so many people working in a particular line. Everybody comes in a different shift. People are operating in their own way. What happens? They put their own thinking in the practice, and then we have no consistency in the process. So to get the consistency, everybody has to follow certain instructions. That's what we call a documented information. It for clarity and repeatability. Day after day, shift after shift, batch after batch, you get consistent quality because people are following a document, and everybody is doing the same way, consistency. Employees will have their own way of performing processes and there will be variation in the process because it is not well documented. For example, any specification you see, there is a tolerance given. It is very difficult to achieve all the time a perfect figure what is given in the target. So there will be variation. So that is always there. And if you do not have a target or a specification, then the variation will be even bigger in the organization. That's why the documents are acting as a specification. So employees are operating by following the procedure. So they are all within the acceptable variations or consistency is maintained within the specification. That's what we are saying. The document is important role in the organization. If two trained employees were to perform the task, would they do it the same way? Suppose you ask this question before making a document for a particular process. There are two employees, only one person working in the whole organization. Maybe there is no need for documentation. Only for future reference, if the person is gone or dead, then maybe we need to have a reference for a future uh, uh, person who is going to come. But if only one person working, there may not be any variability because he is going to follow the same procedure every day. 
but if there is more than one two trained employees working in the particular task would they do it the same way if the question the answer is even a slight doubt that they may not be doing it the same way even there is a slight doubt definitely we need to recommend a documented procedure for that okay so that is what we should ask our question every time whether document is required if there is more than two people will they do it the same way the answer would be definitely maybe not or even perfectly not because even identical twins they don't think alike so they do their own thinking and then they may have a lot of variation between them okay they may look similar but they may have totally different thinking process so that's why they have to bring the thinking together the document will uh, act as a unifying uh, um, component here okay document what is being done this was originally you know when you talk about the nutshell of iso the main thing is whatever you are doing you document it so that consistency will come people will start following it second thing is do what is documented it is not that i made a nice fantastic procedure and then i put it in the cupboard and i do my own uh, thinking that is not going to work that's why first document what is being done then do what is documented to achieve consistency and uh, repeatability okay so that is why we say documented information is very important for organization okay so now let us see the difference between documents and records i already mentioned both are together called documented information but we need to understand the fine difference between them so that when we implement this system we will understand what is what and how we can implement it better so first and foremost instructions to be followed when i say document it is nothing but a instruction given like measure this parameter every week that is a instruction so we can call it a document tomorrow i may say you don't need to follow it every week you can do it every month so i can change the document or i can change the instruction whereas record is evidence of following the instruction suppose i say weekly wants to be monitored a person is monitoring putting the data on a paper in a for format or so and then he is recording it so that is period no nothing can be changed on that evidence of following the instruction whereas document is instruction to be followed second document can be revised i already mentioned you know weekly can be monthly monthly can be daily or fortnightly you can change the instruction based on the requirement and the need of the particular measurement to be made whereas record once you write the record you cannot change it that means it is a uh, you know record is not valid if you have any overwriting or any uh, smudging on the record or cooking up data and all it is going to be not considered at all that's why document can be revised records cannot be revised it is cast in stone once written means that is all permanent document is intention of the organization that means we will do this we will do this we will do that like that they may tell in the procedure we will uh, uh, do the internal audit once in six months that is the intention of the organization so that uh, can change tomorrow they may say we will do it once a quarter or maybe once a year so that is only intention whereas implementation of organization is evidence in the record for us for example if they say the audit will be conducted in april you have to conduct the audit in april and have all the audit reports audit checklist audit notes everything should be there so then it becomes a record you cannot change it so that is the implementation of the organization whereas document is intention of the organization okay then any format for example there is a lot of records being generated before writing the record the empty format can be called a document it's mainly electronic in nature you know documents mainly we are having electronic i mentioned already to save paper we are going into electronic mode keeping soft copies of it circulating everything so we are doing documents in electronic mode whereas records are mainly in hard copies nowadays electronic signatures are being you know accepted so there are soft copy like sap formats and sap generated reports are accepted but uh, it's traditionally still uh, record means it's a hard copy is what uh, people recognize as a record okay so this is one thing empty format before writing anything is a document because the format can change tomorrow this uh, uh, additional columns will be added or additional parameters will be included so it becomes a revision 1 revision 2 like that the format will change whereas the filled format once it is done and signed that cannot be changed so that is a record so these are another difference you know just to get you into perspective what is the difference between document and record we need to understand these fine differences so nobody will forget the difference example simple example is a check leaf is a document 
the bank may change the you know style and uh, the may add some other information like you know 10 years back there was a cts compliant checkbook so people were asked to give all the old check leaves and then take new ones so the whole format was changed so then these things can change but record is a check which is encashed in the bank so that means bank has verified that uh, uh, the figures are right the date is there and the signature is there and no overwriting so when you talk about record three things are important one is the date on the record when it is generated very important second signature on the record who did it who approved it who reviewed it all those signatures are to be there then third thing is no overwriting if you add some extra information on the check without a countersign that check will not be valid if there is no check uh, date the check will not be encashed same way if there is any overwriting or signature is not there the check will not be encashed so record is very important for us to understand it is a filled format whereas empty format is a document so hope you understood the difference between documents and record together they are called documented information okay so this is basically why we need to have documented in the organization now iso 9000 has specified certain requirements under class 7.5 documented information which we need to understand these requirements they are called shall requirements that means they have to be they must be implemented in the organization for us to get the certification okay so we will see that so 7.5 is the class which is sub class of 7 7 is a support class of the iso 9001 2015 under that there are 7.1 like that five sub classes are there 7.5 is the documented information it is basically under uh, 7.5 there is also sub sub classes there are three three sub classes we will look at it 7.5.1 qms documentation to include what they need to include first of all requirements as per iso 9001 2015 there are some fundamental requirements they have said which need to have a documentation that is first and foremost second other information required for the effectiveness of quality management system sometimes you know they may say they may consider appropriate like these words will be there in the standard that means it may not be applicable to all the organizations so whatever organization they are operating other information which is required for the effectiveness of pms so that has to be implemented for example if some organization don't have any measuring instruments so they may not need to have any information or document information on the calibration records or uh, criteria for calibration whereas some organizations are doing a lot of engineering measurements they definitely have to maintain these things that's why it is other information required for the effectiveness of the quality management system as appropriate for the organization okay some external document also will come into the picture like for example iso standard every organization has to keep as a reference for implementing the standard as well as some other engineering standards industry standards or product standards like that there will be various standards they may be keeping it these are all other information for that particular organization whereas the first point is as per the iso 9001 all organizations have to have this particular documentation that is requirement center 7.5.2 creating and updating documents that means when we have documents how to create them and how to update them on a regular basis so the, they are actually current they are not obsolete always whatever is written is being followed that's why we need to update the documents so it should have identification and description that means the document should have proper identification is it a procedure is it a work instruction or is it a, a, a manual or format like that the clear cut identification should be there and then description what is it uh, you know the title the unique number of the document all that is very important then format and media that means it should be in a like a standard format when we say iso iso is all about standardization so all organization documents should be in a particular standard they should have a header footer if there is a title coming on header all the time that should be in the header so page numbers sometimes uh, they may have it at the bottom so they may have it on the top it should be standardized this is what you are saying a format has to be finalized and all the documents have to be following the same way then media that means a soft hard electronic digital cloud storage whatever you call it whatever media you are storing these documents that also has to be clearly specified like you know upfront in the manuals they specify all our documents will be in electronic uh, medium only if you find any hard copies they are called uncontrolled copies so upfront documents uh, the organization will declare if you find any hard copy you don't have to uh, uh, recognize it as any controlled copy it is uh, to be ignored so like that they upfront mention these things format and media 
review and approval for suitability and adequacy. Suppose you write any document, the same person who is writing cannot approve it because it's conflict of interest. So there is always a concept of two pairs of eyes on any document. So that, you know, even if you generate a record, they say prepared by approved by or prepared by reviewed by approved by that's even better so that there are three pairs of eyes looking at the information so if there is any mistake the person who is writing or generating the document may not uh, be able to see it so other person see from the other angle so they will be able to so that's why always the review and approval for suitability and adequacy that means whether it is addressing all the requirements of the particular process to be followed is there or not somebody has to verify and approve before issue the document now coming to 7.5.3, that is control of document information. Of all the three, this is the most important control because most of the time during audits, we see that document control is the biggest problem in organizations. So that's why we need to focus on this particular point. Availability and suitability for use when and where needed. That means whatever document generated, they should be available and suitable for the place of use if there is a particular place where there's a lot of splashing of water happening in the process and you put a instruction within one day the whole thing will be smudged and the instructions will not be visible so you need to have a proper format that means put it in a plastic envelope seal it so that it is not affected by the elements availability at the particular point of use suitability it should be suitable for the person to follow it if it is very cumbersome then it is not going to be followed so people who are following instructions, they find it easy to follow the instruction and it should be suitable for them. When and where needed, that point of use, it should be important. You cannot keep it in a, some cupboard and then you expect operator to come and refer every time. It is not going to be effective. And ultimately you find that the operators are not following the instructions properly. That's why it should be at the point of use, well protected from the elements and it should be available for the people. Adequate protection. Here we are talking about confidentiality, improper use and integrity. Like we say in 27001 information security management system, three things are important, confidentiality, integrity and accessibility. Same way here we need to have that information should not be floating around everywhere. Then all the organization's vital information is going into wrong hands. That's why confidentiality has to be maintained. Always it's a good practice to put at the footer that this is a confidential copyright document it should not be copied without a prior intimation to the uh, document controller or organization like that. There should be a uh, standard uh, terms and conditions should be given on the footer of every document. Improper use will be avoided by that way and integrity of the document to be maintained. So that is very important. That means everybody cannot access the document. It should be either password protected if it is a soft document. If it is a hard copy, it should be in a secure place that everybody cannot come and take these instructions that's why nowadays you know in uh, establishments people don't allow uh, mobile phones because people can just take the information and then they can pass it on to uh, wrong hands that's why adequate protection also to be ensured now how to control these documents let us uh, uh, look at it you know little bit detail uh, because 7.5.3 as i said is important to control the document okay one is distribution access retrieval of documents that is one so who are all to receive this document that list has to be very clear like all documents need not go to all the people so there should be a proper way like level one level two some documents will be there as per the uh, need of the uh, operator need of the process in charge or need of the hod the levels have to be determined who will get what so that is what we call distribution lit list so that the documents can be distributed uh, like that access access means whether there is soft access or hard copy, how we can access that particular document is to be clear. Retrieval of document this is very important. During the audits, auditors will be looking for a particular document. They will also time the uh, uh, time taken for the document to be retrieved by the auditee. If it is taking more than 15 seconds to 20 seconds, that means they conclude you know, the document retrieval or uh, the document control is not effective because People who are using document, they very well know where the document is kept. So it should not take much time. But at the time of audit, if they are searching for documents here and there, that clearly indicates the documents are not being followed. That's why retrieval of document is also one of the indicators auditors use to find out whether real document control is ex existing in the organization or not. In some organizations, I have seen a KPI of uh, a particular document to be retrieved within one minute. So that is what they check every time and ensure that it is being followed. Okay, that is very important. 
storage and preservation how the documents are stored like you know there may be one master copy printed for signing and approval purposes and also during the external audit that master copy also will be used for uh, reference purposes so that has to be stored in a proper uh, elements uh, they should not get impacted by this so that's why sometimes they have got a room where fire protection systems are there so that that is what we call documentation room where all these master copies are kept along with other critical documents pertaining to the organization they have to be preserved so that elements are not attacking them like water fire and other things uh, they spoil the document means it's very difficult to get it like for example uh, uh, olden days uh, when marriages i am talking about 30 years back uh, there will be only hardly five six photographs they take and then they put it in a frame and keep it you will see it in your homes you know your father or grandfather's uh, marriage photographs will be like that only five six and that too black and white and they will all be uh, kind of you know getting damaged so that's the kind of uh, thing they had. So always these uh, kind of uh, documents are normally prone to uh, uh, deterioration over a period of time. So that's why we have to preserve them. And that also has to be mentioned. That's why soft format is always recommended nowadays. Control of changes. Suppose uh, our operator is working online. He, he finds there is a difference between document, what is written, and what is being followed because of some raw material change or uh, uh, process change or equipment change. These changes are basically, if they are not communicating to the uh, uh, relevant authorities, those changes will not be affected in the document. So they may sometimes, you know, write it by hand on the paper and then do it. That's a very wrong practice because that is not being controlled. People have got a lot of, you know, pencil marks, pen marks on the uh, procedure to indicate the changes that should be totally avoided. They have to be properly controlled. That means a document change request has to be given and the reviewing authority has to approve and then it will be made the change will be made on the original document and the new revision will be issued to the place of use that's a proper way of controlling the changes otherwise during the audit you find what is being used and what is written there will be totally different and then you will end up having a non-conformance on the document control that's why control changes have to be very effective retention and disposition for example how long we want to retain the documented information certain documents will be very critical for the organization like design and development and things related till the end of design life you may have to keep certain documents like leave records and uh, casual leaves which are very uh, you know um, uh, bulky in nature so many employees so many records maybe not need to keep it for a long time so that's why how long you retain that is what we call retention retention period and how do you dispose them off after the end of the retention period how do you dispose them off normally there is a, a, a proper way of disposing documents all hard copies of documents and records to be shredded they cannot be burnt as per the supreme court directive no burning of paper is allowed so that's why we have to shred them and then recycle them that is also good the environmental friendly way of doing it so we don't have to cut down many trees we can recycle them our hard copies like this soft copies we can archive them or delete them if it is not required there is a lot of duplicate documents being kept kept that is not required you keep one copy of the obsolete document and rest of the copies can be deleted straight away so these are the various ways of retention and disposition this has to be upfront mentioned how long you retain this document and after that how do you dispose them off so that criteria has to be established and maintained okay then review and approval for suitability and adequacy i already mentioned one person cannot make the document and issue and approve that is not right that's why there should always be a mechanism where somebody is reviewing somebody's document who normally will be a hierarchical level one person above the uh, current level of designation will be reviewing it so that we can have a better view of what is written and whether it is adequately addressing the requirements of the particular process and then approve them so that is very important hierarchical approval is always recommended external documents to be identified and controlled this is once again auditors find many times external documents are not at all controlled only organization documents are well maintained and uh, tabulated and uh, kept there but there are so many standards engineering standards product standards even iso standards are being used but there is no list of how many documents are there who are all having these document copies those information is not available that's why iso says even out external origin documents need to be identified and then controlled when I say control, you can't change those documents. But whenever latest revision comes, you will be notified. A mechanism should be available. So you retrieve the old document and then replace it with the new version of the document. So that is why control is very, very important of all the things. 
and records to be protected from unintended alterations. Again, I said records to be protected means whatever generation records that should be in a records room so that people don't uh, change the records and also unintentionally. For example, somebody is keeping a carbon copy and writing something on the other, uh, not intentionally, and the impression of the carbon copy comes on the record. That's what I call unintended. So naturally intended is totally ruled out. Nobody should do that. Unintended also should be avoided. So records should be protected from these things, elements and other things. Now, documented requirements, as per the clause, we need to look at each and everything. I have color coded them as a documents in red, which is basically instructions which can be revised and records in blue. That means once it is done, it is cast in stone. So now I have not included class one, class two, class three. As you all know, in previous webinars we have covered, there are total 10 clauses in the any management system standard. So out of that, only seven clauses from class four to class 10 are requirements, whereas class one, two, three are only for reference information purposes. So that's why I have started my table with the class four, which is context of the organization. Now let us understand what are these documents and records which are required for this particular class. In this 4.3 subclass, which talks about scope of the management system, which is very, very important document. It clearly tells what is covered in the quality management system, which is applicable for that particular organization. The nature of products and services and the boundary, physical boundary, and what are all the uh, uh, activities they are doing. That all has to be covered in that. So the scope has to be very clear. That will be in the manual as well as in the certification issued to the company. That says clearly scope of certification. It will tell you manufacture of this particular product in this particular uh, premises and all the other associated processes like that will be mentioned. So if there is a design and development involved in the organization, that has to be included. If it is not applicable, you have to justify it so that you can exclude that. So like certain classes in ISO 9001 can be excluded provided you give a proper justification. Like I mentioned earlier in an organization, there is no measuring instrument available. Then naturally you can exclude or you can say calibration or measurement traceability is not applicable in the scope. So like that non-applicability can be justified with the proper uh, explanation. Okay, so that is why the scope is very important. And also I highlighted in a bold to indicate that this is a mandatory document every organization has to have. So first and foremost in the management system, a ma mandated document is scope of the management system. Second, in the same clause 4.4, information necessary to support the operation of QMS processes. Here I have highlighted the word necessary. So it means it is not all the things you have to document. What is important, necessary, which is important to ensure that consistency is maintained. So that's why this also is important to have it as a document, whatever is necessary to support the operation of QMS processes. Okay, so these are the two important documents under class four of ISO 9001 2015. Coming to records, under this class, there is no record mandatory to be maintained, but there may be some records which are like, you know, nice to have, but that is not important. I'm only focusing on mandated documents here. Okay. Second coming leadership, class five, which talks about the leadership and commitment and the quality policy under 5.2.2. This is a subclass of class five. Here, the quality policy is a maintained document information. That means the policy will be revised as per the changing circumstances. It will be reviewed in the management reviews so that it will be constantly updated. That's why it's called a document. And that's why I made it in red. You understand documents are always highlighted in red. And this is also a very important document. That's why it's also in bold. So 4.3 from class four, scope of the management system and 5.2.2 quality policy. This is also very important document, mandatory document as per ISO 9001-2015. There is no record mandated under this particular class. Now coming to class six, this is 6.2. It says quality objectives. That means every department, every person in the organization should have some personal objective, which should be aligned with the departmental objective which in turn to be aligned with the company objective so that the signed policy by the top management can be achieved. So the policy gives a framework for the organization and every department looks what we can do in our own department so that the signed policy by the top management can be achieved. So that's why this is also a very important document. Upfront we are saying what will be done, 
who will do it, when it will be done, like a smart objective, specific, measurable, uh, um, realistic, time bound, and achievable. So these are very important. That's why we call quality objectives. That is also a documented uh, information. So that is 6.2. And uh, in records, there is no mandatory requirement. But normally, it is nice to have a risk and opportunity register where we maintain what all organization can foresee kind of risk and what are all the organization opportunities that can be availed. And then periodically monitor them and mitigate the risk and manage the opportunities. So that is, again, nice to have, but not a mandatory requirement as per the current version of the standard. But in future, there is a likelihood that this will become a mandatory document because the risk and opportunity register is actually helping the organization to accelerate the growth because they are managing the risk and opportunities very well with the proper established framework. So that is why it is also a nice to have record. OK, under support class, class 7, there is no documentation requirement. OK, but when it comes to record, there are some mandatory records here. 7.2, under class 7.2, records of training, skills, qualification, and competence. This is very important how the employees are being trained so that their competency levels are increasing the organization as a continual improvement. So that is why current level of the employee, what training he needs, how they are trained, and what are all the records pertaining to that, and how their skills are getting upgraded, this is a very important document. Second one, 7.1.5. Under this, we are talking of calibration records pertaining to measuring equipment. Here I have put a star. That means wherever it is applicable, for example, I already mentioned some organization may not have any instruments. They may only be doing monitoring. By naked eye, they can monitor so many things. They don't need a physical measurement. So in that case, it's not applicable. So if it is applicable, then they have to have calibration records to ensure that the measurement traceability, whatever measurement they are doing, is basically uh, validated with the calibration records. So that's why it's must. And then 7.5.1b, under the documented information clause, list of documents and records. So this also to be maintained. That means how many documents of external origin are kept in the organization, how many uh, internal documents, and what are all the records being generated. We call it master list of documents and master list of records. So this also to be maintained by the organization. That is why it is also coming as a list. OK, then class 8, operation, is a very important class, because that's where we are doing the activities. So here. First and foremost, under 8.4.1, that's a subclass for external provision. When I say external provision, it is nothing but suppliers, vendors, we are talking about them. So in the new standard, it is called external provision, or the supplier is called external provider. So here, the criteria for evaluating our suppliers, our service providers, has to be very clearly upfront maintained. That means a document which says every year or whenever new supplier has to be uh, bordered onto the organization. They have to be evaluated for their suitability, financial viability, all those things. So that criteria has to be upfront written down so that they can be evaluated based on that, you know, evaluation, re-evaluation on a constant basis. And then feedback to the suppliers. Why we do that? For the improvement of the supplier. If they improve, we are also going to improve as an organization. That's why it's very important in the ISO 9001, the supplier evaluation and re-evaluation is very important. That is the record showing that they have been evaluated, but how they have to be evaluated, that is the document we are keeping it. That's why criteria for evaluation of suppliers. Now, coming to records under class 8, we will see now. Okay, under a class 8 operation, we will see only the records now. See, under 8.2.3, results of review of requirements for products and services. This is mainly with the customer. Whenever we uh, get some order from customer, we have to review the requirements of the customer so that we are meeting the requirements in full. So there is no customer dissatisfaction. That's why we have to review the requirements of the customer and keep all the records pertaining to the review. Earlier, we used to call this contract review. But nowadays, this is results of review of requirements for products as well as services. If you are a service industry, then your service uh, requirements from customer has to be reviewed and accepted. Second, 8.3. This is very important clause, only applicable for design and development in organizations. For example, in some organization is making standard products, like which are, uh, uh, there is IS standard for it or BAS standard for it. So they are just following the standard and making the product. So they may not do any design and development in that case. They have to 
make like for example a battery battery alone cannot function it has to go into a cavity like a camera or a cell phone then only it will perform so there is a standard for that outer dimension so you cannot exceed that so then it becomes a standard product so no design and development involved but you are making a, a bottle water for example the water inside is a, a standard there is a, a isa standard for it then there is no design and development for the water but the bottle we are making it is uh, unique to individual manufacturers or suppliers so they have to have a particular design to ensure that this can hold this water and the integrity of the bottle during packaging transport has to be evaluated so the design of the bottle will undergo for design and development so they will have to do a design and development right from customer requirement and then how they are taking the inputs and how these things are managed planning review of the requirements and then verification of the requirement by doing calculations and validation of the design and development requirement by making a prototype product a single product or first of batches are made and then the entire design is validated then only mass production is done once that is done the outputs the design and development outputs they are also a lot of records like bill of material and other uh, requirements of the product everything is clear cut to mention so these are all the records we have to maintain and whenever we change the design for example you know there is some market complaint or customer issue we change the design then also we have to do this entire uh, planning review verification validation and all those records have to be maintained that's why 8.3 only for organizations doing design and development that's why there is a star on that okay then comes to 8.4.1 records of evaluation selection monitoring performance and reevaluation of external providers and actions thereof we saw in 8.4.1 there was a document requirement which is criteria for evaluation of suppliers now we have done the evaluation we have generated the supplier evaluation records and re-evaluation records and then based on the records what actions you have taken these also have to be recorded that's why it is very important document then 8.5.1 characteristics of the products and services so whatever products and services we make for that what is the characteristics if it is a product there should be a specification and things like that it has to be recorded if you are providing a service then what type of service you are providing it should be upfront recorded then if you are making some products where traceability and identification is a requirement then we have to maintain the traceability batch wise product wise so that if there is a recall in the market for example in automobile industry this is very important to maintain traceability so that we can limit our recall uh, quantity if you do not have a traceability, we will end up uh, recalling, you know, millions of vehicles, which is a waste of time and money for the organization. That's why the traceability will help the organization to limit the recalls or even identify any particular uh, problem in a particular product. We can find out where it happened, when it happened, and we can take a focused corrective action in this regard. That's why identification and traceability where required, the records have to be maintained. Then 8.5.3 property belonging to customer external provider suppose some customer is sending some product for repair in your organization under warranty or out of warranty so then till it is remaining in your organization it is treated as customer property as you know iso 9001 focuses on customer satisfaction so any property from customer has to be treated with the utmost respect and the utmost you know care so that if there is any damage or deterioration they have to be immediately reported to the customer same way external provider like supplier may be sending a lot of material to you but you may pay the supplier as and when you consume whatever quantity from the stock so then the whole stock is uh, belonging to the external provider only what you consume you pay for it but the remaining stock also is within your organization because he may not have space uh, space constraints may be there but then you have to take care that his product is not damaged that's why customer property and the external provider property has to be very important all the records stock quantities how is the condition and any damage uh, how you are going to communicate all that has to be recorded very important then 8.5.6 under the operation clause results of review of changes to production service provision the person authorizing is change suppose some change is done in the production schedule all those things those records has to be maintained so that there is always a traceability of who authorized what and what actions have been taken will be maintained. That is again a mandatory record. Then 8.6, that is records for release of products and services. Like, you know, somebody has to authorize the release of the products or service from the organization. 
So the competent person only can authorize. For example, I made the product. I cannot release it to customer because there is conflict of interest. So somebody else like a quality assurance or a audit person can only authorize the release. So that's why we need to have the conformity with the acceptance criteria verified and then it is released. So all those records have to be maintained. The final inspection certificate or dispatch, uh, uh, you know, checking all those uh, records have to be maintained, uh, retained. Then finally, 8.7 records of non-conforming outputs that means during the process if you find any non-conformance the output of the non-conformance has to be controlled and the proper records should be maintained so that we do not mix the good product with the bad product and the uh, entire uh, lot becomes a suspicion lot that's why records of non-conforming output also is maintained under operation now coming to performance evaluation under this class what all things to be maintained as record there is no documentary requirement all our records 9.1.1 records of monitoring and measurement as you know performance evaluation is nothing but checking whether you have done as per plan so we do a lot of checking so that is all nothing but monitoring and measurement so all that records have to be maintained so the evidence of measuring something it is available then under internal audit 9.2.2 evidence of implementation of the audit program and the audit results that means right from audit schedule audit uh, um, notes audit checklist and then the audit report, including non-conformity reports, if there is anything, all these records have to be maintained uh, in the organization. So that's record. Again, 9.3.3, evidence of results of management review. We say management review is conducted once in six months. Then we need to have evidence that it has been conducted. So the best evidence would be the management review meeting minutes. So those minutes are uh, kept as records and they are retained. So that is what is uh, important in the 9.3. Uh, 3.3 class. Now coming to improvement under this 10.2.2 evidence of nature of non-conformity and any subsequent actions taken. You see under 8.7 we only recorded the non-conformance nothing was done but now in 10.2.2 we are doing the uh, action on that where whatever disposition is taken and what corrections and immediate containment actions and corrective actions all that information is available in the 10.2.2 evidence of the nature of non-conformity and subsequent actions taken those records have to be kept then 10.2.2 also says the results of corrective action you have taken corrective action what is the result of it whether the corrective action is effective or not to review that we need to have the results of the corrective action so this is also very important record to be kept under clause uh, 10 so these are the mandatory uh, requirements regarding document as per iso 9001 2015 now let us see the extent of documentation that means any organization you take how the document uh, uh, what extent we can have a document uh, earlier we mentioned more than one person is working if there is a critical process we need to have documentation so now these documents also has got different levels. So normally we have four levels of documents. Level one, we consider it as a uh, Apex manual or the quality manual where the top management, how the organization is viewed by them, that will be captured there. It will mostly mirror the, uh, the standard requirements. Okay. Then procedures will be talking to the department level, how the HODs are looking at the organization or their departments those kind of procedures will be there. That's mainly for the processes, like purchase process, uh, production process, HR process, finance process, like that maintenance process, those, those kind of procedures will be there. Then when you come to the level three, which is basically the uh, on the line procedures, how the operators have to do certain jobs. It can be a standard operating procedure or work instruction or operational control procedure or simple uh, you know, workflows where people can easily follow what is being done, like pictorial representation of the activities happening in the particular area. These are all called work instructions. Then finally, the records. The records are the level four uh, document or whatever, you know, level four uh, documented information where we are showing evidence of what all we have done by following the documents in level one, level two, and level three. So you can see the pyramid structure, the base is formed by the records. So from the size itself, you can see the records are playing a very important role in the implementation of quality management system. So that's why the records form the bedrock of the quality management system, which will tell you whether organization is implementing the PMS effectively or not. So this is what is the extent you need to understand. So with this, I conclude my webinar. Now I will open the forum for 
questions. I have received some questions on the chat box, and also I will uh, invite more so that we can answer all of them. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, what what is more important, uh, uh, document or uh, records? As you can see from the pyramid, the uh, documents in the old standards version of the uh, ISO 9001 more focus on the document uh, instructions and things like that. Slowly, the standards have matured over the last 35 years. Now, the focus is shifted from um, evidence of implementation. That's why I say is the record. So records are more important for the organization to evidence implementation of QMS effectively than documents. They are also important, but the more number of records are being uh, necessitated to show the requirements are being complied. So only three or four major uh, mandatory documents are there in the entire management system. Whereas there are records, more than 20 records uh, to be evidence so that we can implement the system effectively. So I would consider records more important and our uh, pyramidal structure also indicates that. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Sir, I have a question. How many documents and records are mandatory as per QMS? See, as far as, as I am concerned, the uh, document part is very clear. Maximum three or four maximum. That one is uh, 4.3, the scope of the management system. That's a mandatory document. Then 5.2.2 is the policy, the quality policy signed by the organization. That's a mandatory document. Third is the objectives, quality objectives uh, set at department level. That is 6.2. So these are mandatory and maybe 4.4 to certain extent which is also important if uh, there are processes which uh, are going to implement the quality management system. Whereas records will differ from organization to organization. Suppose an organization has got a design and development, there will be maybe another 15 to 20 records uh, we have to keep. Whereas if the design and development is not there, then those things will not be applicable. So it will vary from organization to organization. But regarding documentation, it's more or less, uh, you know, the documents, it's more or less uh, same for across organization, three mandatory or maximum four mandatory documents. Records, they will vary. Depends on the nature of the products and services offered by the organization. Sir, one more question. Yes. How to control documents electronically? The, nowadays, uh, the, as I mentioned earlier, the shift is uh, happening from hard copy to electronic. Uh, there will be a document controller assigned in every organization who will have the single access uh, you know, for the master access for the documents, he will be keeping the Word uh, document, MS Word document or any other, uh, you know, um, um, Word software, but he will only put the control copies in the PDF format in the server so that, you know, everybody can only view the document. They will not be able to edit those documents. So if you find any Word document in any other place, that means it's uncontrolled. So that is very easy way of controlling and that can be password protected and uh, the hierarchical person can know the password. So in case of his absence, he'll be able to open those uh, uh, things in the server and put that. Whenever you want to change the document, immediately you can take the old version and then put the new version in the server. Old version can be put in the archive. So document controller will have full access. Others will have only view access in a PDF format. This is the best way we can control the documents and we can avoid you know duplication or um, uh, old versions being used in the um, workshop, if you have a hard copy, this is a very common mistake happening in the organization. Two versions of the documents are available in the place of use. So that can be avoided if there is a possibility uh, of having soft uh, control. Sir, I have a question as well. Yes. Uh, how can we control the documents which are external to an organization? Yeah, lot of documents we'll be referring uh, which are not uh, pertaining to our organization. It will be external documents uh, starting with ISO 9001-2015 itself. It's an ISO document. That is like that organization in every department have to make a list of documents they are using which are of external origin and maintain the list of those documents and uh, the place of use so that the list is available with the document controller and he will be checking for the latest versions. For example, ISO 9001, everybody knows five to seven years it will take. But whereas some product standards will not take such a long time. They will be updated very frequently, maybe yearly or once in two years also. That's why it's important for the document controller to have the list of all the external documents used in the organization. So he will have a regular checking mechanism to see whether latest version uh, uh, is available and what is used in the organization are the same. If not, he can do the 
update of that and then circulate to the relevant people. That's how it has to be controlled. So first of all, listing all the external documents and then controlling them by verifying the latest updates in the system. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? I guess there are no more questions from any of the participants. Uh, we can now conclude this particular session. So I thank you, Mr. Sitaraman, for this perfect and wonderful webinar today, which you have given. The way you have shared your insights and knowledge on today's topic was really interesting. I hope that all the participants has been benefited by your expertise and wisdom, which you have shown and shared on the topic uh, of discussion today. I thank you for giving your valuable time and effort, which you have invested in making this webinar a successful one. I thank all the participants as well. Uh, without you, uh, any webinar cannot be as good as this was. I hope to see you all again soon. I wish you best of luck on behalf of TNB, TNB Academy for all of your future endeavors. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you again for the opportunity given by TNV to host this webinar. And uh, I'm really delighted to be part of this. Thank you. I request all the participants to now leave the meeting, please. Thank you so much.